Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. We've got an incredible guest, Brad Divins, who you'll meet in just a second. We're coming to you from the Harmon Experience Center in beautiful Northridge. A lot to talk about. Our good friend Becky Barabas is on the one and twos, and we are here. Welcome, Brad. It is a pleasure. A long time coming. A long time coming. And here we are. Yes, here um, we are. Thanks for having me on. Oh, uh, no, it, it is literally our pleasure. The amazing thing, a couple things we kind of talked about off camera. Brad is a front of house engineer for Enrique Iglesias, has done Lincoln Park, done a ton of people. Um, one of the best in our business, uses some JBL stuff, which we'll talk about in a second, has fixing to get mixing. This is a busy, busy, busy <laughs> man. Um, but during the pandemic, what I noticed was that certain parts, certain sectors of our business who took a shot also advanced themselves maybe technically, um, sometimes personally. Now, in your case, you went back to playing. Yeah. Is that correct? That's exactly what it did for me. Yeah. Once I realized that there's no more live shows for me to mix, Yeah. my wife said to me, you know, you got a studio in the basement. And why, and, why don't you call, and why don't you call some friends of yours and have them come over and play with you and Good idea. record. So it, it still took another week of prodding. Sure. But finally I called my friend and he came over and he played drums and we recorded. And I'm like, why did I stop playing? Yeah. yeah. You know, now I've got all this time. And it, it allowed me to also educate myself more with, you know, new plugins or new technology as far as mixing goes. Yeah. Which I was about to hopefully go do again yep. at some point. Yep. Yep. So I kind of used it as a as a learning experience and also to get back to my roots and get back into what I did and loved that got me into this That's in the first place. Literally what we saw and it, it it affected our show that way. We we made some changes, but the advances then made it so much cooler when we could come back. You kind of were in shape. Yeah. Right. Is that is that the analogy? Yeah. You know, I made a decision to go a different way with mixing. It, it made me think about when I come back, what do I want to do different than mm -hmm. when I left? Because doing it a certain way for so long, you kind of tend to fall in a rut. Yeah. So I had all this time to think, oh, yeah. I think I'm going to take a little different approach this time. Yeah. Yeah. Go back into it with a different attitude, not let things get to me so much mm -hmm. and look at the beauty of how much I enjoy doing what I do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. And, you know, that's going back in. That's how I approached it. Yeah. It was fantastic. How's your time divided between um, live and everything else? Live is probably, at the moment, it's probably 75, well, 60, 40, I would say. Oh, so it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's okay, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, live. You know, I work with Enrique, I work with Disturbed, I do some one-offs with Cindy Lauper and yeah. Gwen Stefani. And yeah. so I try to, you know, in addition to Enrique, do other things live as well to keep my chops up. Mm -hmm. And then I also do stuff in the studio at home. Like say an average day with Enrique, uh, how, how, how early, how many days do you give to the, the walk up up to the exact date where were they, were they is it a day or two days planning or yeah i mean there's probably some e emails that go back and forth between the production manager or the sound company and, mm -hmm. and myself regarding the gear and the logistics and then we might fly in a couple days early uh -huh. mm -hmm. go to the venue the day before the show make mm -hmm. sure that everything's good uh -huh. Do you attend the sessions that are before, you know, the, the ch checking everything out? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm involved with all of that. Okay. I mean, there's obviously system engineers that make sure that PA sure. is is firing the way it should mm -hmm. be. Sure. But then it's up to me to make sure that it's the way that I want it. Checking mics and all that. Yeah. Stuff. And oh, when, I do all of that. And once you're there, you have technology and plugins that can map rooms and figure out stuff, right? You can literally, yep. it's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. I mean, you can put in the seating chart. You can put in the dimensions of the arena. You put in the dimensions of the boxes, how many there are. Yeah. And then, you know, they do their magic, their wizard, wizardry. And then here's the angles that it needs to be in. The, the one sort of physiological question I have is, so when you're mixing and the frequencies come through your goatee, how does it get to your <laughs> ears so that you make the adjustment? Oh, it's, you know. <laughs> It's a classic rock and roll get, goatee, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, I appreciate good hair. Well, and that's, you know, uh, yeah. it's one of the only places that it still grows. So. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a whole so, other you know, thing. That's a discussion we understand. Go. Well, actually, it acts as room treatment. 
Yeah, no, the I mean, closer he gets to the wall, the more he's you know, it actually kills the reflections too from the console. <laughs> that's the beauty sometimes. of it, and that's what you find out on Pensado's place. You know, you won't find this. These information are things you don't learn anywhere else, absolutely, absolutely. Nope. So, coming up, was this always a dream, or did it morph into? Well, I'll tell you what the dream was was to be a rock star and to be on Absolutely. stage. That For was always that was always the dream. Yeah. And that was the only thing that I could focus on growing up mm -hmm. is I'm going to play music and I'm going to be on stage and that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Who were your heroes? My heroes Angus Young, oh, oh yeah. yeah, Joe Perry, oh yeah. yeah, as far as guitar players, singers were Robert Plant, Steven Tyler, sure. Robin Zander. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so yeah, so I Circus Magazine, I had all the posters mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all over my walls. And mm -hmm. I would sit in my room and play guitar and mm -hmm. pretend, oh, I'm Joe Perry today or uh -huh. I'm Angus Young. And yeah. so that was always a dream. And as I went along, I always kept my eyes and ears open and tried to learn everything else about, you know, okay, what's the guy that's mixing my band? Like, what's he doing? And mm -hmm. how does it sound? And so eventually one day I found myself in a position where I need to pay the rent. Yeah. And now I've moved from the East Coast out here to LA. Different game. And my manager said, hey, have you ever thought about tour managing? And I'm like, tour managing? Huh. You mean babysitting grown men? Right, right, right. I'm like, oh, I think I can handle that. And so I got to the meeting with the band and the manager says, you know, you're gonna do this, this, and this. Oh, and by the way, we need somebody to mix. And I said, I can do that too. <laughs> tour manage and mix. By mix, well, by what, mix, you mean the front of house? Be, be yeah. in front of house. Yeah. Well, I had never done front of house. Of course. In that regard. Right. But I knew that I would be able to figure it out yeah. and that I wasn't going to fail at it. And, you know, I asked a lot of questions. I'm sure I made a lot of mistakes. And here you are. You know, I was just honest with people and yeah. they knew my musical background. So I think that always yeah. gave me the foot in the door mm -hmm. with the musicians because mm -hmm. I, they felt yeah. like I was one of them. Absolutely. And I would get it. You also uh, contributed a lot of techniques that didn't exist before. You, you invented a lot of things. Yeah. Pretty cool. I can't remember anyone, but, <laughs> one, but yeah, I know you did because I wrote, I got it written down right here. All right. What, like what kind of techniques? Like putting a putting a compressor on every single track. Nobody does that. Well, when you started out mixing, pretty much all you had was a console and maybe you had a few comps and gates and some effects. That was it. But as digital came along, you realized, hey, I can do. Now I can, my approach can be more like the studio approach. Exactly, exactly. Let me ask you this. Um, what's your stand on immersive audio on Atmos? Do you, do you mix that also now? You know, I've done in it once. Live? I've done it once in, L in uh, Las Vegas. It was the first time that I had heard things in the mix that I always knew were there, but because of it being immersive, mm -hmm. every thing has its place in the PA. So now instead of left and right, you've right. got seven columns of mono uh -huh. and wow. you can place things where you want it. And I thought it was a really cool, a really cool thing to be able to hear certain elements that I never heard before. And the approach was different because there's no group bus processing. There's no master bus processing. Mm. Yeah, things that, that we know. Weird for me. Exactly. I, yeah. Because you want to fit everything into left, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And there's a certain way to do no, it. No, I haven't, I haven't mastered mono yet. <laughs> mono is a whole different beast, isn't it? <laughs> Seven columns of mono is, is wow. really interesting. But my mix translated the same in that field as it did left, right. Did it really? Even, it was even better in some regards. And you also then have to balance out the way the artist is hearing and so on and so forth. So they have to get comfortable with this new thing. Do you do it before the show? Do you do it during oh, every, sound check? Everything was before the show. And, and Enrique's on them. ears, so ah. he's got a monitor engineer dedicated to got it. making it sound in his ears like he like wants he to hear it. it to be. Gotcha, absolutely. Yeah. Wow, man. You know, one of the beauties about um, being here at Harmon and JBL and stuff is just the gear is, you can see some of the gear. Tell us about the JBL stuff. It's just, I have it at home and I show it off. Well, I'll tell you about the first time I heard this VTX A12 uh -huh. was in 2017 and I was invited out here and they got me the console that I mixed on. I brought the Enrique tracks yeah. and I threw my mix up and I just sat in the room and I just listened and I'm like, man, I, it sounds like there's a nice pair of near fields in the air. Yeah. Wow. Everything, the, the imaging, just how pristine the mix sounded. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. Nothing was smeared and everything just seemed to stick out. I'm mm -hmm. like, 
this is what a PA is supposed to sound like. Yeah. I should be able to hear every element yeah. of everything that's going on on stage. Yeah. And, and can I be a little colloquial? See, the thing about JBR Love is everything you said, the imaging, Christine, this, that, and the other, and it always has some ass. Yeah. And JB ass is a good thing. JBLs always have some ass right there you can really control so you can feel it in a way that that's not true of others it's muscular yeah there's a way. good punch yeah to the system yeah, it's got absolutely. it's got weight to it absolutely i learned to mix on jbl yeah no I'm they're sure, i sure did for they're, about six seven years you know it's it, it's really incredible and as you know they're a partner of ours you're an ambassador of theirs the the thing that also was really cool is you don't have to be squeamish about saying you got to check this stuff out this no not good at all good stuff no, because here's the thing. If I love something and I believe in it and I, I'm going to talk about it mm -hmm. and I'm going to use it. Mm -hmm. And when I say the first time I heard this box, it's exactly how I imagined my mix should sound through a system. And then I said, I want to take this out. And it even goes back to JBL. It was the VTX 25 II, mm -hmm. which of all places we were in Turkey and they had a massive rig. And the same thing I threw up. I let, Pink Floyd is my system music that I play oh, to determine how oh good God. the system sounds. Oh, I want to be the in the sound check. <laughs> yeah. I use uh, Waiting for the Worms. Mm -hmm. I use Another Brick in the Wall, Part 2 and oh, 3, and another one of these days. I want to be there when you do that. Oh, God, I want to be there. And so I pushed that up through the system, and the production manager was sitting out at front of house with me, and he's like, what PA is this? Wow. I'm like, this is JBL VTX 25 too. He's like, He's like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, I yeah. think we should be traveling with it's this. Like that. And that started the whole thing. Wow. And then then I heard the new one. I'm like, wow. It's a no brainer. Tell tell us about the, the one thing that we've noticed since we started the show 13 years ago is the evolution of our constituency past doing one thing. So for instance, fixing to get mixing. Tell us about that. <laughs> what what is that? I was Working with Garbage. Uh -huh. And we love were in rehearsal. Love the folks in Garbage. Oh, I love them. Love them. They've Best done people our ever. name a number of times. Yep. Love them. We have a, a rehearsal space in North Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And we're there for a month. I've got a Pro Tools rig. I've got my console. Every day I would record everything that the band rehearsed. Next day I would come in early before anybody else. And I would start running tracks mm. and dialing my mix in. Mm -hmm. And one day the tour manager said to me, why are you here so early every day? I'm like, I'm fixing to get mixing. <laughs> Boom. That was it. Boom. So Perfect. that started this. Then the whole concept of the class came about because I was thinking how I need to come up with something that I can do because I have so much time on my hands mm -hmm. during the day at the gig. Mm -hmm. What can I do to try and give back a little something? Love it. And the concept of the class came up and I was out here with JBL at, at one point and mm -hmm. I, I'm like, you know what? I'm thinking in my head, I've got this idea for this class. I'm just going to throw it at them and see what happens. And I did. And they're like, we love it. Let's do it. Let's go with it. I love it. So the concept of the class is being that I started out as a musician mm -hmm. and I ended up as a front of house guy. Mm -hmm. Like it's my approach and my story of how I got to where I am. Mm -hmm. Because once I learned how to mix and I developed a technique that worked for myself, mm -hmm. then I carried it all the way from Lincoln Park all the way through to Enrique. The concept of mixing, whether it's Cindy Lauper, Enrique, Garbage, the concept is the same. Right, right. The principles are the same. Right. And so, and I try to put it across in terms that, you know, somebody who maybe not, doesn't know what everything about what we do yep. can understand it. Yep, yep. You know, yep. and I tell my story. I'm lucky to be sitting where are. I am right now. We all are. I tell people, we give a lot of talks. And I, one of the lines that I tell people all the time is, it's a privilege to be able to be a steward of pop culture. You can't take that, you have to take that seriously. Yes. And people trust your taste and your judgment. You can abuse that, and, uh, but you can affect things in a really great way. And so many people are looking up to you that there's a responsibility that you give them reason to look up to you and not mess it up. I take that really seriously. I and, do as and, well. And it comes back. I find the way it comes back in terms of how you affected me, how you taught me, how you, I now, and so we're kind of leaving, we're teaching the next generation on how to handle the legacy of what we've done and they'll make their own legacy. That's right. kind of how I look at it. Does that yeah, make sense? It does because mm -hmm. things, the way we do things now are so much different. Mm -hmm than when I started and changing rapidly and changing rapidly. And you have to, but 
the concept of mixing is the same. same. The technology changes, same. but the concept doesn't. Same. And and Dave and I are appearing at Fixing to Get Mix and Win. Is it next month? Sure. Oh, okay, December cool. 7th at the yeah. Kennedy Center. I'll be there. You guys I'll are be invited. There. Yeah. Be there. I think you guys should be a guest at my yeah. class. Happy to do it. Yeah. Happy to do it. Just let us know. What's the difference between putting together a, a system for a, a mega church and just a regular gig like one of your regular gigs which aren't regular how do you approach them do you approach them differently no i think i mean i've never put a system together for a mega church but they're becoming like arenas yeah so that system would have to be designed with the same mm -hmm. specifications in mind as the arena mm -hmm. system would be so from front to rear you would have time time aligned systems i mean where you know one here and one in the middle and one in the back so everybody yeah, I mean, gets the same yeah, if it's a big arena, you put delays up and you time align things so that the people in the back of the arena hear the same yeah, at the same that's time. That's amazing. I will give a little pitch to JBL and Becky and Chris. Um, we are actually working on a church that's about two miles from here. We have been for the last year. Um, it's, it's called the Hope House and it's, we call it the Grammy Church. There's probably six Grammy winners in the band. Oh, wow. Five in the singers. And I walked in and five minutes later called my friends and Harmon and said, we got to do this. Let's just get some expertise and we got to do it, take the next yeah. place. And they've toured it and done stuff. And I also think that there's a corollary to that in when you have companies that are vested in their community, and when they care enough to be to get behind your class or care enough to get behind the issues we have, I always think that there's a there's a correlation between the equipment and the gear and the people. Mm -hmm. When you have people who care, the gear is better. Right. Exactly. Do you find that everybody has gear? Yeah. It's the people that make, that the, make difference. the big difference. I agree. Yep. I agree, bro. I That's agree. the big difference right there. Would you say that clarity is the last unconquered? Thing. I would say, well, for me, clarity is the most important thing, mm -hmm. but it, it's definitely a challenge sometimes in an arena mm -hmm. yeah. when you've got a lot of reflective surfaces yeah. and things are bouncing off of the floor and people mm -hmm. are yelling and screaming, but the sound systems have gotten so much better now. Mm -hmm. Explain to me the, the vertical elements of what, of what you put a speaker through. Well, the vertical elements of the line array is that everything from top to bottom is all aligned mm -hmm. all the way up. Mm -hmm and it's a dispersion of the box mm -hmm. and the way that it throws left to right. But you want to keep it from hitting the walls, right? You do want so to keep it from- you use people to do that. <laughs> use people to do that as well. And then you got to determine the angle that the box is going to hang at. You know, there's 90 degree boxes, mm -hmm. there's 120 degree. So, so that's what Herb was talking about earlier, the math that goes along with it. Yeah, there's a definitely, there's math in all those designs. Wow. Uh, no, I was going to say, I remember when this is a, a really amateur level, but you, you could get equipment at home and then the receiver would sort of map your room for you. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, you know, and, it, and you, know, yeah, you set the mic up. And yeah. And the folks we've interviewed on the show, we've had a little bit of a clock as the technology has changed and what they've been able to utilize. So from episode 30 it was one thing episode 525 it's a whole other thing with, right. with where you are and the, and the thing that's interesting about having these kind of conversations is i think we're all in a constant technical evolution and week to week month to month certainly year to year something new is coming down mm -hmm. the pike and i think sometimes you, you use an interesting line that i think is really applicable you say pick your gig Yep. And I think you also have to pick your technology. You can't become just reactionary to everything that comes and, and you lose who you are as a right. singer. Is that correct? It's Yeah, because there's so much that can come at you yeah. from all different directions. Yeah, exactly. That you, okay, this is what I want. This is what I expect. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this is this is how I'm going to achieve that. And this is what my client really like. Because, you know, we're, we're, at, we're at the service of folks. Yeah. And if we're not serving them properly, then, you know, they find other people. Right. I, I think lighting has come really far. Video has come. Oh, God. I'm not going to say it's easy, but the lights go on and off mm -hmm. and the video wall is on and mm -hmm. you see things. But the audio, nobody ever walks out of the arena going humming the lighting show. I... And if the audio isn't good, then I failed at my job because that band and Enrique is up on stage playing for those people. And for me, 
That's the experience that I want to give them is great audio. I have found in the last five to seven years, I got involved with this California Department of Education and they have all the show business verticals, animation, gaming, film, so on and so forth. What I found really quickly is they never had a fulcrum that was an audio component. And very quickly they realized the experience isn't going to be the, the best unless you have really good audio. Yeah. And I went from being the stranger kind of in audio involved in these calls to, oh my God, can we talk to you? It's been interesting for, for Dave and I in the show to watch people really understand that audio is in everything. I tell people all the time, there's no place in the world that's silent, which means right. you, there's no limitations on your job, but you gotta think this way about it and not just linearly. And cause if you don't have good audio, everything else is ruined. I agree a hundred percent. Oh yeah. And it shows up now. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I, it makes us have a little bit of a swagger. Yeah. <laughs> like, and people know, they know good audio. Yes. They might not know how to explain yes. what they heard, yeah. but they know if it was good or not. They know if I can hear the singer or not. Mm -hmm. You know, was it too bright? And, and as a really... mixer, all you have to do, just listen to the music. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. just put it together how you want it. And when it's a experience good experience, it. it's an amazing experience. I mean, not this is a shameless plug, but all of you out there, if you get a chance to go to Manny American's Verse Restaurant, and you want a good audio experience, it will blow uh, your I'm sure. hair yeah. back. Yeah. What he's put in that room. I mean, you, when you have a 15, 15 piece band five feet away from you and you can talk to the people at your table. Wow, that's impressive. And you can't hear silverware clink because everything is going up, being noise canceled and coming back down. You cannot believe, he calls it Studio 7, you gotta go. And the wow, food that's... is as good as well too. You'll be between, wow, this tomahawk chop is great, and Jesus, the band is right here, and I'm telling, like it's it's it's, it's amazing. It's, it's really amazing. Yeah. But it, but it's an example of when people care and they put their heart and soul into it. It's amazing where you can go with audio. I mean, yeah. there's, there's just no there's no cap on it. Yep. Yeah. And I think it's important for the audience to have a good listening experience. Yes. That's so important. Yes, yeah. They know when they have a bad one. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't know when they're having a good one. And that's what you want. Yep. They just go, man, I feel good. I don't know why, but. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, when I'm standing in front of house in, in mixed position and I look around the room mm -hmm. and I can make moves with the mix and I can push and pull things and yeah. I can watch the audience react. Yeah. And the sound system is is reacting to that as well. That's yeah. like it's such a great feeling. It's like being an athlete. Like exactly, you're, you're and I'm in, like, and now, now all of a sudden, I'm not on the stage, but I'm still performing because I'm performing absolutely. this mix. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's how I approach mixing absolutely. as I a think, performance. I think that is absolutely dope. Absolutely, yeah. I, we do the same thing with our live appearances. It's like, oh no, showtime. Right, exactly. Let's, let's bring it. Let's bring it. I'm, I'm not. I'm actually during our live appearances not that kind to everybody else. I'm like, we're going to get this right. <laughs> right now because people come with an expectation and when you shortchange them you hear it back i don't even want my brand to feel that way i'm going to bring right. it every single time now here's the bad news because you're an athletic guy you're in maryland you're doing stuff you've got to deal with batter's box and it's oh, oh man i know okay I, it, it's coming up i was thinking about this one it, it can be tough. I'm not going to say I was dreading it, but... I don't know. Does, uh, is the pitcher energized? Do you energize over there? Throw some strikes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So are we looking for a one-word answer, or is it just a... Uh, you know, a couple words. A couple you know, words. Do, we do don't want think. an elaborate... You can also tell Dave to go to hell. There's a question you don't like, just... <laughs> I've been there. It's I not, can plead defense. It's not what you think it is. <laughs> Synthesizer. Moog. Uh-oh, this is going to be tough, Herb. Reverb. Arena. Mm. 808s. Too much sub. Ah. <laughs> Horns. Love them. Stereo bus. Stereo bus. Oh. So you got me on that one. Ah. Master, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Compression. Nice. Feedback. Don't want to hear it. <laughs> um, favorite console for, for, for our live. Yamaha Ravage. Limiters. 
Sonox. Oh, Strings. Guitar. Overheads. Snare drum. Acoustic lens. <laughs> Acoustic lens? <laughs> you got me on that one. Okay, I know I did. If, if you had to select one piece of equipment or plug-in to, to be on a deserted island for the rest of your life, which one would it be? One plug-in? Wow. One plug-in. Or, or a piece of outboard gear. Piece of outboard gear. Well, I guess it's for the rest of my life. I like the Rupert Neve Shelford channel. Mm. Good. And I think if it was a plug-in, I'm going to have to go SSL 4000 yeah. or a 9000. Yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. Good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> That's Yeah, that would have to be it. All right. I don't know why you got me on mix bus <laughs> or master bus. But I like it pisses you off. <laughs> you yeah, like... Well, it's not it's not a one word answer. Well, right. it, it has so many names. It's hard to kind of sometimes. Right. Two bus, stereo bus, master bus. I think of, you know, that's the summation of everything all down the line yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. is the mix bus. As you sit here today before we wrap up. Where do you see it going? Are you optimistic about where we are, where we're going, the, the, the space, people learning this job? Yeah, I think so, because I, I think, like we said, audio, everyone deserves to hear good sound. Yeah. And now that the, you know, we're, the pandemic is behind us and people are moving forward and people are coming to shows again, mm -hmm. everybody wants to get out there and, you know, yeah. and do it again. I think maybe we're going to start seeing more of some of the immersive kind of thing. I agree. Maybe audio is going to start catching up to where lighting and video is. I agree. You know, I agree. and it's going to be more of a, you know, an experience. No matter what technology you have, it's still about here and here, isn't it? It's all about here. Right. And it's all about here right. as well. And that's another thing that I try to get across in my class is mm -hmm. it's not about the gear mm -hmm. because you should be able to dial in a mix on a Mackie and with a couple of Behringer comps and gates and maybe, you know, an Echoplex yeah. and some reverb unit. Yeah. You, sh you should still be able to p put a mix together. Mm -hmm. You just, you have to listen. You have to listen. You can be as technologically advanced as anybody mm -hmm. and know everything there is to know about the gear. But mm -hmm. if you can't hear and you can't listen to the music, Doesn't matter. then I don't care if you know what the gate does or the compressor does. Right. Yeah, it works right, but what does it sound like? Right, right. You just put eight plugins on a kick drum. Right. Did you go up and see if the kick drum was tuned? Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. pick the right microphone for the kick drum? Mm -hmm. Is it in the right position? Mm -hmm. It's all about listening. I, I, I tend to try to focus more on the intangible things like feel and groove and emotion and vibe. Mm -hmm. And those elements are universal. So if you've got an EDM track and you've got all those elements in it, and you get on a playlist and they want to move you up to another playlist, you can because that's that's universal among all the playlists is those right. intangible things. And it's hard as hell to do sometimes because I'm not the guy that, that did the stuff. I'm the one that mixed the stuff. Right. And I think you have to mix. If you mix with emotion mm -hmm. and you get that to translate in the mixing, it's all about the feel. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I don't want everything to be the same the entire right. show the whole yeah. 90 minutes right but how do you teach that to somebody it's hard to do it's very hard to do because some guys will say okay well here's my mix and i'm going to put a limiter on it and it's going to sit here at 100 dba weighted mm -hmm. for 90 minutes mm -hmm. so no you're telling me that the that i'm going to mix hero right for enrique S when the they're on way. the c stage with acoustic instruments i'm going to mix that just as loud mm -hmm. As I'm going to mix the first song or the last song right. of the set? No way. No, why? No, exactly. You know, exactly. Cool stuff. it's all about cool feel, stuff. emotion, dynamics. Yeah. Let me say this. Your tutorials are great. I really think you can get a lot out of these tutorials. A lot of good information yeah. for everybody. Well, which, thank you. Which is precisely why you want to get fixing to get mixing. It's exactly why we introduce you to people like Brad Divins, who 
absolutely looks at this game in the way that you need to look at it, understand the right components, understand why we partner and ambassador with folks like JBL and why it's been such a pleasure having this conversation, man. Well, Thanks, it's been Brad. a pleasure here as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, my friend. I enjoyed it. Guys, Mix we'll, bus, you got me on that one. Mix bus, we'll, <laughs> get, we'll come back that and get you. Oh, I know, we'll come back let's, and get let's it. Let's find out what acoustic lens is. I don't know what the hell. Acoustic yeah, exactly. Lens. Well, there was, <laughs> there was a, such a thing as a lens in a PA system way back in the 80s. Oh, so you're telling me I'm old? And it looked yeah, like right. it looked like a bunch of fins <laughs> put together, and they called it a lens. I'll be damned. And I don't. I'm not so certain oh, what yeah, JBL yeah, didn't yeah, make yeah, one. Yeah, like those those rib. Oh, no, yeah. don't take credit now. That's exactly. your good luck. <laughs> <laughs> guys, we'll see you next week. Thank you, Becky. Thanks, JBL. Bye, guys. Peace. Thank you.